with the chat. All right, we got some people coming in here. Welcome everybody to the Rocket Matter webinar. We're doing law firm billing with fewer headaches and more revenue. Um, so what we're gonna do is this, is so Ed is our product designer. We'll talk a little bit about our bios, but uh, for now, what we wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do about 20 minutes or 25 minutes of slides. And then we're going to get into uh, the application and you'll be able to see it firsthand, like how to do some of these things. So, um, you know, keep the questions coming. So, okay, so I'm Larry Port. I'm the CEO and founder, uh, co-founder of Rocket Matter. And we started this journey back in 2007. So for 2000, since 2007, I've been working with like literally probably tens of thousands of lawyers, seeing how they like run their law offices and all that jazz. And luckily along the way, I was able to uh, stumble across the extremely gifted Ed Case. So Ed, tell everybody what, what you do. Um, hey everyone. So I'm the VP of product here at Rocket Matter. So I handle all things product and uh, that would deal with product design, requirement design, uh, working very closely with our engineering and development team, and also uh, sort of pioneering the product vision and roadmap. Yeah. So Ed's got a really cool job. I wish I could do that job. It's, it, I don't have the talent to do it. Um, Ed has also designed uh, sculptures, golf courses, and all sorts of other like real life objects in addition to software. So he's a multi-talented dude. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, Rocket Matter is a practice management and time and billing uh, company. We've, we've been in the business serving attorneys since 2007. We were one of the pioneers of cloud-based uh, practice management and time and billing. Uh, you know, people love our customer support. They love our product. We've, we've won seven consecutive Stevie Awards for customer service excellence. If you know Kim, she and her team do an awesome job. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac, PC, Android, iPhone, you can work from wherever you are. And we got people all over the world using our software. Now, um, <clears throat> because I've worked with so many law firms, I had to kind of, I, I, I'm kind of like a lawyer in the sense, I'm not a lawyer at all, but kind of like a lawyer who goes and starts his own practice. I was a tradesperson who started my own business. So, you know, I was a software engineer, never managed a person in my life, but because of my engineering background, there were certain techniques that I was privy to. And, you know, some of those were agile techniques, some of those were lean techniques. And when I started working with law firms, I noticed that a lot of them didn't have any kind of business, um, I don't want to call it savvy, but know-how at all. And it's kind of a crazy thing considering how many lawyers, about 88% of them end up in firms of 25 total employees or less, and about 60 some percent of them are in firms of four or less, that the law schools don't teach people how to run a business. And it's, uh, we can, you know, I can get on my soapbox all day long about that one. But so what I decided to do was take what I knew from like learning how to run my business. And I, I met an attorney from South Carolina who does a similar thing. And the ABA published a book we wrote called The Lean Law Firm. So, you know, we talk all about some of the stuff you're seeing here and there's now an audio book. So if, if you wanna go kind of deeper into some of the things we're talking about, take a look at The Lean Law Firm. Um, so, and this goes back to day one. Now, now not everybody is the same. Um, all law firms are different in, in, how, they, in how they practice. So, some lawyers were finance majors. Some lawyers, like at every juncture, when the option was to take a, you know, a class involving mathematics, they took the other route and they went poli sci, they went history. So some, some, some lawyers are very, very hesitant and just do not like numbers. Uh, so it's just the nature of the beast. There's really three kind of ways that law firms uh, leak revenue, and, and and the good news is, is that when you kind of take a look at yourself right now. And where you are and, and, and use this kind of webinar to kind of like really think about where you are in your whole journey here. If you find that you're not doing stuff well, in some ways, I mean, that's bad news, but it's also some ways kind of good news because it means that you can, there might be a lot that you can harvest easily. Um, so think of it like that, like there's a lot that you can change and a lot more money that, you know, low hanging fruit, so to speak. So the, the three areas though, that you need to tighten up are in that we see all the time is poor time capture, inefficient invoicing and low collection percentages. Um, so uh, just the, the first firm that I was ever in that we ran Rocket Matter in, this is kind of how things worked is that at the end of the month, they would literally like look through stacks of paper and legal pads and they would go through Outlook and they would try and reconstitute, reconstitute all of the work they did over the course of the month. 
And then they would they would code they would they wouldn't code they would write up by hand in Word actually Word Perfect um, invoices. So and then they would have to send them all out. So so this process took them. They shut down for like a day or two. Um, and and that's so so you know there's there's leakiness at the time capture phase, the invoicing phase, and then on the collection side, that's a whole nother story because you know when you're sending things out via mail and you're waiting on checks. They had a, they had usually around like eighty thousand dollars in accounts receivable, which was a pretty high percentage for them. So they had cost, they had, they had clients that wouldn't pay and pay late and so on and so forth. So these are the three things that they're, they're the three legs of the stool. Now I have a poll. Let's I want to kind of like get a little bit educated about the audience, so I know how to kind of um, you know steer this conversation. So I'm going to launch a poll, and there's three questions in this poll. Uh, I'm going to leave it up on the screen for a little bit, but the first question is how many billable hours do you lose track of a week? Uh, the second one is in, including sending the invoices out, how long does it take you to invoice your clients on a monthly basis? And the third question I have for you is what is your collection percentage? Now you might not know all these things, right? So, um, but let's make this as interactive as possible and, and return your attention to the screen for one sec, uh, one second and, and, and get these um, uh, things in. By the way, we have about 100 people on the call today, so there's there should be some pretty good dialogue. Um, <clears throat> all right, by the way, if there's something in these poll questions that does not jive with you and just doesn't make sense based on your practice area or for some reason, just write it in the chat and let us know. Okay. Now, um, but as you're doing this, if, if, you're, if you don't wanna participate in the poll for whatever reason, I'm just gonna leave it up on the screen. I mean. You got to think about these kind of three questions, which is how accurate is your timekeeping? How long does it take you to run invoices? And what is your collection percentage? This is, these are the three areas where there's going to be a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Um, in terms of time capture, uh, and Ed's going to kind of show some of this stuff later on. Um, the, the most important thing you can do is to capture time as you go about your work. Um, some people like to reconstitute the day at the end of the day. Some people do it at the end of the week. Some people do it at the end of the month. The best way to do it is just to kind of get in the habit of doing it as you go about your day. And we're going to show you that there's, there's ways that you can do this that's not as painful as you might think it is. Right, but but that's number one, and and this term is called billing leakage. Now, this term was not, as far as I know, invented by a gastrointestinal doctor, but and it's a horrible term. But billing leakage is what we call when it is an industry term describing uh, when law firms or other professionals do not accurately keep track of their time. And the problem is, is that a lot of times when you are making up your bills, if you are in doubt about whether or not you did something, you always err in the favor of the client because you have these ethics rules and you're a good person and all these different kinds of things. So um, billing leakage is a real problem. Now let's just kind of close the poll and share the results just to see where we are with things. Um, if we share the results, let's, let's take a look. Um, how many billable hours do you lose track of a week? 7% said non I'm perfect. All right. Ed, round of applause for those guys. That's good. That's pretty solid. Yeah, exactly. Um, they lose 0.1 hour to two hours. I'm pretty solid. So we got about 18% responding. I could use a little help. Um, they lose about 2.1 to five hours a week. So let's, on, on that, and that's 27%. So that is the, um, aside from the people that don't know, which is, um, that's a little concerning. If you don't know, you want to make sure you get a handle on it. But for, aside from that, aside from the mode, which is the, the second highest is 27%. I could use a little help. If, if you bill at, let's just say 300 bucks an hour, and that's starting to you know, be low now. Um, so you're losing, what would that be? That would be 600 bucks a week. Uh, and there's, let's call it 50 weeks in the year. So you're losing about $30,000 um, by, by not billing two hours a week. So um, it's kind of important to get a handle on these things. So if you're like at five and above, you got to realize that you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, so, I mean, it, you, you could be moving, leaving six figures on the table. So let's, let's get this dialed in. Um, 
there's a, the next question was including the sending process, how long does it take you to invoice your clients on a monthly basis? And the mode here is two days or more. Um, so that's, the, so the largest number of people, 32% is two days or more, 21% say one to two days, 16% say half a day to a full day, a couple of hours, all right guys, 21%, and, and then 9% of the people are saying less than a couple hours, I'm super efficient, so that's awesome. So hopefully you're attending this webinar to, I don't know, become, I don't know, get to the moon or something. Like these people are like on point. What is your collection percentage? The mode here is I honestly don't know. So people don't know their collection percentage. So that's concerning because now if, if you don't know how many billable hours you're leaking a week and you don't know how, how much you're collecting, you could be leaving. I mean, the good news for you people are is that, that you could be collecting a lot more money going forward. Uh, a lot more money going forward. So that's good news. I mean, maybe you lost some money along the way, but there's a lot to harvest, as we say. A good amount of people um, are billing, are, are, are collecting 95% or greater. So if you are 95% or greater, I would love to see in the chat widget what some of your techniques are, because very few law firms are able to achieve it. In fact, I think, you know, there, there, there may be a tendency to overestimate this because industry-wide, um, you know, a lot of the collection percentages tend to be in the 80s. Um, if you if you keep bill, billing leakage in mind, then it can be a, a low 70%. So by the time you lose billable time and by the time you invoice things and, and get payments on them, then you might only be collecting 71% of the work that you perform. Uh, but this is straight collection percentage. And so um, interesting results. Now, um, Back to kind of some of these techniques, um, making time capture work. An another thing, as aside from doing it right when you're doing it, is also to make sure you capture time wherever you are, right? So mobility is key. Now, this has radically changed, obviously, in the last like, you know, 13, 14 years since phones have been uh, in people's hands. So now, you know, with mobile applications like the ones we have or like our competitors have, or some of our competitors have anyhow, makes it really easy to build time on the fly. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all sorts of way to capture time now that there weren't before. Um, so that's the billing leakage side of things. Now, I mean, Ed, I'm just rattling on and on here. Do you have any thoughts? Um, no, I think it's really interesting. The poll results, particularly, um, like you said, in some ways, I think it can be a little troubling or alarming, but it's, it also means that you're leaving a lot on the table. So um, that could be seen as a good thing. Yes, I agree. So the, I think the, um, you know, this is kind of something that we observed early on in Rocket Matter because, you know, we have access to so many law firms and how they practice and we see what works and what doesn't. And but it, the one uniform thing is with invoicing is this, is that if, if, if you're one of these uh, firms that it's taken like two days to send out the bills, then likely it's you're procrastinating or it's just such a disagreeable thing. And especially you're, you're probably a smaller firm and you, you went into the business of law because you like the law or you like helping people and sending out invoices is just like the biggest pain ever. So the more painless this process is, the more likely you are to do it with regularity. And I, I got to be honest. I've heard like horror stories. Like that that firm that I, um, the firm that I was telling you guys about, our first very first law firm. They um, they may have spent two days getting out the bills, but they spent but they got the bills out. Some lawyers just don't get their bills out for months at a time. Now the, the problem there is is that the longer you wait, the more likely you're going to take a haircut on that bill, and the bigger it's going to be. So. If you do work for somebody, and I can tell you this as a client, or maybe you've been a client of an attorney that bills by the hour, um, you know, I get an invoice for something, what is it, May? I never know what month it is anymore. But um, if, if that work was done in April, fine. You know, okay, I totally get it. I remember all this kind of stuff. And if this, you know, but if, but if it was from December, then I'm going to call you up and I'm going to be like, listen, this... Uh, we got to talk about this bill. I mean, this bill, first of all, is for five months and it's for $70,000. I mean, first of all, people are more likely to pay you uh, in full when the amounts are smaller. Um, so getting them smaller means billing them more regularly. Um, but just, you know, getting on a, a, I would say the critical thing is 
having an easy way to get the bills out, doing it on a regular basis, like on a monthly basis, and usually the first week of the month. I mean, Ed, what do we call the first week of the month at Rocket Matter? You may not know this, but <laughs> billing week. Okay, yeah, because that's more of like, so, so most law firms um, that we have at Rocket Matter, they either do it themselves or we've conditioned them to send out their bills in the first week of the month. And we pay attention to this because it, it creates a huge load on our servers, right? So, and then Doug, uh, one of our uh, attendees said that 30 day billing cycles is key for high collections and he's right. Um, okay, another thing is like generating invoices by hand, that, that's a habit to get out of if you're in it. And, and uh, that law firm that I initially talked about, they're not the only people that do that. There's probably people on this call that still do this if you are, generating invoices by hand, by doing Word documents. Um, you know, it's time to kind of move away from that. It's just a very inefficient process. Uh, it's manual, which means it's error prone. Really what you want to do is you want to have things like created for you. Um, and then kind of like on a similar uh, idea is that you want to make sure that if you're using practice management tools or any kind of productivity tools like your calendar, or if you're uploading documents or whatever you're doing in your day-to-day -day basis, those kind of things should flow naturally into your invoicing. I, I like QuickBooks. I think QuickBooks is a good product. I know that I'm probably in the minority in the universe on, on that sentiment. But when you're just using QuickBooks to send out your invoices, a lot of times it's not tied to the activities that you're doing. So that gap creates a problem. Um, because it requires you to do number one, manual entry, which takes time and is error prone. And number two, may not just naturally fall out of the work that you're doing. Um, what you want to do is have things naturally fall out of the work that you're doing and, um, and things go a lot faster. And we're going to show examples of this when we get to the product demonstration. Um, okay, we're about 18 minutes past the hour, so we're going to try and get through the slides in about like maybe 10 or 12 more minutes so that Ed has plenty of time to uh, show some of the product. And even then, it's probably uh, not enough. Um, now, closely related to invoicing is, and, and remember, we're talking about the three legs of the stool and where people are leaking their, their invoicing and where they're inefficient. We have the billable leakage on the time capture. We have getting invoices out in an inefficient manner. Some people, the, the mode on the call, remember, or I think it was 32% are doing it in um, two days. But we didn't really talk about like the collection side of things that much. So in terms of collections, like this is the typical flow right now. Um, so once you generate those invoices, you need to print them out if, if, if you're not sending them out electronically. And if you print them out electronically, then you have to you know, fold them, you got to stuff them into an envelope, you got to address them, you got to stamp them, you got to send them, and then you got to wait for a check to come back. Once the checks come back, which could be 30, 60, 90 days or 120 days, or, you know, you might have to chase some of these people down, then you have a stack of checks and you have to go through your checks and you have to enter them into your ledgers and you have to make sure that everything reconciles and so on and so forth. So it's a lengthy and involved process, right? And it's very manual and that's not very 21st century of us. Um, so uh, this should be avoided, in my opinion. Um, it's, it, it, it takes a lot of time and it's, there's a huge cost to law firms that are doing kind of this um, manual sense. So one way around this is to start taking credit cards. And, and this article was actually written, I think in, I can't remember when this article was written, but it was like in the, it may not even been in the 2000s. If it, if it was, uh, this article may be like close to 20 years old, but this was published in the Mass Bar and it's about should lawyers take credit cards? And, and the whole, the point is, is that all lawyers should start taking credit cards. And if you're concerned about the fees, then, you know, maybe it's time to increase your fees. I, I think that for the most part, uh, your clients are not gonna be upset if you raise your fees by 3% or 5%, and that's not gonna be a problem. Now, if you, you can't really, there, there's rules around from the credit card processor's perspective, and we can go into this in, in great detail if you want to hear about it or get in touch with me and I can send you information on it. But you can't just raise fees for where you're taking credit cards. You have to raise fees across the boards. Uh, it's just, there, there, there's ways around that, but it's, it's very tricky and you don't want to get into trouble. But, um, you know, for the amount of money that it costs you to run credit cards, um, the savings in terms of getting money more quickly and eliminating all these manual steps, I mean, pays for itself like many, many, many times over. 
Um, it's kind of interesting. We're seeing, we're starting to see firms, especially like on the family law and the estate planning side, I guess, because they're more consumer oriented, but some of our firms are, are processing everything through them. And um, we're seeing them process like hundreds of thousands of dollars through credit cards. So it's kind of interesting. Um, somebody asked, can we pass that fee onto our clients? It's really not wise to do that. Um, you can do that, but you got to know the rules inside and out. Um, and uh, for uh, Krishna, who asked me that question, uh, send me an email, larry at rocketmatter.com, and I can send you our white paper on like the rules around uh, credit card fees. But it's better just to raise your rates, in my opinion. Just raise your rates by like 3% or 5%. I, you're not going to get a lot of pushback on that one. Um, and you can grandfather in existing clients if you need to. So um, that's my philosophy on the credit cards and the fees related. But um, th the thing is, though, that you do need to understand your rates. Um, so we got involved in the credit card business back in 2016, I think, with LexCharge. And I was kind of shocked about how credit card rates worked because it was a new business for me. Um, but it's kind of weird. Like, people will advertise 1.95% or 2.95%. And one of the biggest giveaways that you don't know what you're doing when you're shopping for credit cards uh, processing is to ask what the rate is. I mean, you kind of have to do that, but if somebody tells you our rate is 1.95% or 2.95%, unless it's flat fee pricing, there's all sorts of surprises in it. Like our competitors and not to throw anybody under the bus, but other people in our space who advertise those rates, if you do the calculations, you're paying about 4% on those credit card rates. So it's it can be very misleading. And if, if you're supposed to be taking a credit card by swiping it and you take the numbers down, you can get penalized by your credit card processing company. Uh, so you really need to understand, like the best way to do it and the way that we've done it is like flat fee, right? Like we do like 3%. And the reason we do that is because there's no mystery. If it's like a debit card, if it's an American Express card, if it's taken this way, if it's taken that way, there's just no hidden fees. So flat fees are really the way to go when it goes to credit cards because you're not gonna end up with surprises. And if you do take credit cards right now, then you may wanna get in touch with us to just, we can find, we can let you know what your effective rates really truly are. The other thing is that like when you, when you, when you accept a credit card payment, you wanna know when you're gonna get paid on that one. That's a big question because it's, you know, you wanna get paid within a day or two. Some people can hang on to it for like as much as three, four or five days because they earn the float on that money that comes in. So you really wanna be able to get your funds quickly. Okay, and don't worry, I'm paying attention to the clock. No, <laughs> there's a lot to go through, so we uh, need to do that. So, but once you do the credit cards, then you can send out electronic invoices and have your clients click on a link and pay them. And that way you don't have to like open all the checks and we get people getting paid same day. Um, the other thing is that um, you can do cool things, like you can do payment plans. And you can start thinking about how to build people differently and get rid of, you know, collections for law firms is tricky because, you know, you're advocating on behalf of your client, but then you have to go around and turn around and bill them and chase them down for money. So it's no fun to be shaking people down when you're trying to help them too. So payment plans is a good way to do that. You say, okay, here's your balance and we're going to tick down until that's gone, right? So we'll show you ways that you can do that in a, in a similar, um, in a similar thing, uh, there's recurring billing. And, and we've engaged law firms before at Rocket Matter. We like whenever we have like business law firms or commercial law firms, we've on a couple of occasions paid them like about twenty five hundred bucks a month for all you can eat kind of like advice. Now that doesn't include like if they need us to like get a structured loan document or if we need to do some sort of like crazy deal, like some sort of major piece of work. But for your typical kind of oh, what do I do in this situation with this employee or that or. Um, Ed, my product designer is threatening to sue us. What do we do? You know, like those kind of things we have people on retainer and we can go and we can ask them. Um, by the way, somebody, Lindsay, you said that you're a Rocket Matter subscriber. How can I set up a credit card for the clients? Um, you can, if you get, if send me an email, send an email to Larry at rocketmatter.com and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, and we'll have somebody follow up with you. Um, but you might think that recurring billing isn't for your practice, but start thinking creatively because that's what the big boys are doing right now. So if you're in like some sort of commercial law or you're doing some sort of like civil defense, think about like, you know, a monthly service fee or some, you know, some sort of like subscription and recurring revenue. And it's great for you too, because you can predict what you're going to have. IP law, there's all sorts of room for monitoring services, you know, for patents and trademarks. If you're in estate planning, 
maybe in, instead of charging for a certain thing, maybe it's like an ongoing thing that you do or, you know, come up with cool packages. This is the time where you can invent packages and, and, and really kind of um, come up with ideas for what your clients wa want. Maybe talk to them and see what they would want. A family law, a major trend right now in family law is unbundled services because what some people are trying to do is they're trying to do like, and you see this with the product, Hello Divorce, which is an automated like, um, app that helps people walk through the divorce process, but they're still going to need legal advice. So even though people might be going it themselves and reading NOLA books or whatever it is, um, you know, there is that time where they're going to need advice. And so you don't necessarily have to provide all the legal services. You could provide some of the legal services and you can charge, you know, a monthly fee for that and do your thing. So these are just some creative ways. The, the other thing you want to be aware of though, when, when, if you do take credit cards is that the fees for the credit cards, the, the credit card processor that you sign up with, like the ones that serve the legal space, they they really got to know what they're doing. Like if you're gonna if you're taking a deposit for trust, then and you're collecting a retainer, for example, those fees can't come out of your trust account. It has to be set up in such a way that those fees come out of your operating account. So if you do sign up for credit card services, you have to make sure that the person that you're working with understands how trust accounting works with credit card processing. So, and then the last thing is that you're going to need to measure what you're doing. You really need to measure. You, um, let's get a handle on that. For those of you that don't have a handle on it, let's, let's figure out what your collection percentage is. Uh, let's figure your cycle time out, which is how long it takes you to perform a case, because the shorter that is, the more money you make. Um, and I do, and, and if you read the Lean Law Firm or listen to the book on tape, we talk about cycle time and how that relates to income all day long. Uh, you should know your accounts receivable. You should know which attorneys are, are generating the most billable time, which ones are collecting the most, because it's one thing to bill, 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 but it's another thing to collect. So understanding your KPIs is pretty key. Um, and, you know, a lot of firms are going deep with this kind of stuff. So if you're competing against big boys, I mean, they're good to learn from. I know a lot of people don't like big law, but they, but they have all these like bean counters that like really take a look at their business and are doing interesting things. And their pricing models and all the stuff that they're doing is is worthy of study. But you know, um, ninety one percent of them are using profitability data to assess their partner performance. So if you have multiple partners, you need to kind of like that's another thing: are people being reimbursed fairly at your firm, right? So KPIs will help you do that. And um, eighty nine percent, you know, look at their clients because you might want to drop some clients. Maybe you have like deadbeat clients who aren't paying you or whatever. So. You know, 89% of the large firms are doing that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We have a demo. Now, this is a uh, CLE for Florida. And I know there's a lot of Rocket Matter people on this call. But if you're not a Rocket Matter customer, um, the reason that we're demonstrating this stuff in Rocket Matter is because Rocket Matter demonstrates these principles. Um, so, um, but just because I don't want you to think that I'm shilling from the podium, um, you should consider competitors. There's a lot of people that do what Rocket Matter does. And um, time solve is an option. Like Rocket Matter is a very, it, it has a lot of practice management rich functionality. Time solve has a lot less than that. It's more just concentrated on get the time and billing. Um, Cosmolex is, an, is a good option if you don't want to have to interface with QuickBooks. Like if you're used to a PC law environment, then Cosmolex is actually pretty good because it has the accounting, the integrated accounting built right in. So you don't integrate with QuickBooks. The flip side is your accountant has to use Cosmolex. And then tabs three, if you don't want, um, you know, if you don't want a cloud-based solution, um, you can still get desktop-based software and tabs three is best of breed. So with that said, Ed, I am going to stop my share and pass the mantle over to you so you can kind of illustrate some of these uh, techniques. All right. Awesome. Um, no, great, great slide deck, Larry, very informative. And now we can jump into rocket matter and take a look at how, uh, some of these things are implemented. Um, let me know now we have to go a little fast guys, just so, but we'll try and make it this we're, this is going to be recorded and we can get these things to you. So if you feel like you're losing track of things, no worries. Sorry. I don't okay. now. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. I can see it. All right, fantastic. So here we are in Rocket Matter. This is our user dashboard. So when you log into the application, this is where you're going to land and it's going to kind of be a user centric view of, of what you have going on. So you'll have your calendar events, um, some firm billing information, uh, your task list, 
um, and, and what you've built uh, recently, whether today or this week or however you want to look at that information. But one of the key points that Larry touched on is just the ability to capture this time as it's happening instead of going back after the fact at the end of the week or the end of the month, which can be incredibly inefficient. So, you know, within a product like Rocket Matter, this is something that you have open um, in your browser all day as you work. Um, you know, you can really quickly and easily pop open a time and expense uh, entry form and start adding time. So, so right, right away, I can just put some information here. I can tie this to um, a client matter and, and Rocket Matter is going to suggest for you the last 15 to 20 uh, matters that you've worked in. So right away, you can, you can have that information at your fingertips. You go ahead and enter the units and you're good to go. So it's really easy to enter time in, in this way or expenses, or if you want to enter a flat fee, all those things are readily accessible and very easy to do. Uh, but like Larry mentioned, uh, there's other ways to capture your time as well. Like if you have a calendar event, um, you know, in Rocket Matter, when you add an event or you sync an event over from another um, service or integration, uh, you can choose to bill for that event. So that duration of that event, however long it is, um, you, can, you can automatically bill for that. So this is where, you know, using something like a QuickBooks for invoicing that's a little bit detached and disconnected from where you're working is a little bit more challenging. And, and the way Rocket Matter set up and designed is, is as you're creating these events, as you're adding documents, as you're adding emails, you can very easily add billable time to those things as you're performing those actions. So you can see it reduces a lot of friction and really kind of uh, pulls, pulls time capture into your daily flow in the way that you work. Um, Another really nice feature we have is our multiple timers. So at any point in time, say the phone rings and it's it's a client and you, and you get into a phone conversation with them, you can just click that button and right away start capturing time. Um, and this multiple timers feature that we have up here, as you go through the application, you can go to different pages. Um, that's gonna persist, it's gonna stay there. If at any point in time you need to shift gears, um, you know, say you're working on a document and then the phone rings, you can easily fire off another timer really quickly and easily, and your timers are going to get pushed to this list here. So this is this is a feature that we've gotten really good response from because no matter what you're doing uh, and, and what you're working on, it's really easy to quickly pivot and start capturing billable time and have those things uh, stowed away for whenever you're ready to, to go ahead and invoice for those. And, and also, we didn't have that originally. That, that feature was requested by attorneys. Um, yep. I guess it's a product of kind of a very distracted life and, and world we live in. Yeah, yeah, quickly changing gears and, and, and you know, having the ability to pivot quickly and, and capture time um, on the fly is, is really important. So uh, that's a great feature in the product. Um, the other things are task lists. You know, you, you can uh, create tasks and, and assign those tasks to yourself or to other people in the firm. And then as you're working on a task, you can also just run a timer. So um, again, really easy and, and very integrated time capture functionality throughout the application. We also have some really cool add-ins for um, the Office 365 platform. So if you're if you use Outlook um, or if you use um, Outlook for emails or for calendar, you can very easily be in that product and open our add-in and send those activities right over to Rocket Matter with billable time attached. So um, the other thing is a mobile device. Obviously, it can't show that here on this particular call, but uh, you know you always have your phone with you, so you can you can open up the mobile app, start capturing time there. That's going to pull right into Rocket Matter and get pulled into invoicing when you go ahead and invoice. Um, so you know another another you know area where we like to be somewhat proactive is just helping our users. Um, with some of the, the 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 billing criteria that they might have to adhere to, so we have a new feature that we're uh, in the process of rolling yeah. out right now, which is uh, billing audit rules. This and is actually um, Ed. I should probably ask this one of the chat because I don't have a poll question for this. But you know, those of you in the audience, if you could reach over to your chat widget and let us know, do you do any leads billing, or do you bill to insurance companies, or do you use the leads format at all? because um, this addresses another major kind of like area of like billing leakage. 
Sorry, Ed, go ahead. Yep, yep, exactly. So, and that leakage is if you're submitting your invoices to an electronic platform, there's usually going to be very strict criteria and rules that you have to adhere to. Otherwise, those otherwise those invoices can be rejected or they can be paid out at a reduced rate. So here at Rocket Matter, we set up the ability to create these rules and these guardrails to make sure that even before you generate the invoice, all the activity that you're creating uh, are going to meet those rules and that criteria. So this is uh, an hourly billing limit rule. So say, for instance, you had a client that you're working with and you had an agreement that you couldn't bill more than four hours a day, um, you could set up this rule. So when you're using Rocket Matter, um, any user who's entering billable time, the system's going to look and see if that time surpasses four hours, it's going to alert and notify you. So uh, let me just go ahead and show that in action. So if I were to come in here and start to create an activity, I will go ahead and do this for sky brothers because they have this rule applied and i'm going to enter five hours we did have a limit of four um per activity so right away it's going to let me know that hey uh you know you have a rule in place for four hours and this exceeds it by one hour now you can't go ahead and save this activity anyway and capture that time um, but it is going to alert you and notify you that a rule that you've set up has been violated and when you go into the pre-bill and invoicing process this message will be surfaced again so um the, those guardrails are really important, especially if you are using one of these e-billing platforms to submit your invoices, your leads invoices. This is going to help you, um, you know, reduce rejection rates and, and have a higher collection percentage on those invoices that you're submitting. Um, and again, we're moving very quick on these things. So if any of these features you, you have more interest in and you'd like to know more about, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to Larry or myself. Yeah. My emails. <laughs> it's even easier than Larry. Up, stay at his house. <laughs> so um, the the um, I was just wondering, does anybody deal with uh, invoice rejection from insurance companies on the call? I'd be curious to hear that one because uh, a lot of times I, there might be more solos on this one. Um, but if you're like a lot of larger, you know, insurance defense specific firms, this is a constant battle that they face. Yep, definitely. Um... So I'll continue to roll forward because, like I said, we have a lot to cover. Um, and, and at any point in time, if you guys have a question, please use the chat widget or feel free to follow up with, with either Larry or myself uh, after the, the, the call. So um, another area where we have very robust functionality is, is trust accounting. So this is my trust account list. And you can come in and filter this. Uh, you know, you can also roll it up to like a, a global trust journal to see all the transactions that have happened across all trust accounts and get your totals. Or you could filter down by client as well. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this Sky Brothers client and see what we have here. Um, they only have one trust account. And from here, I can request a retainer. So that's another way to make sure that you're, uh, you know, that you're able to pay invoices if you do have a, uh, a trust account set up for that particular client. And we also have Evergreen as well. So, you know, if you want to replenish an Evergreen retainer, you can set what those minimum balances are and, and when you would like to replenish those. And that'll automatically happen as you generate invoices. If that Evergreen has dipped below, it's going to automatically request those funds from, um, from your clients. And the nice thing about the request retainer feature is this is going to send out, and we'll see a little example of this a little bit later, but this is going to send out a link for the for your client to uh, very easily click on that and enter a checking account or a credit card and um, fulfill that retainer for you. So instead of like Larry said, uh, you know, sending out a paper a paper invoice or request and mailing it out and waiting for that to come in, just imagine how much time this saves. Where uh, the same day you could see these funds come in, you know, instead of you know sticking it in the, in the mailbox and it hasn't even left the mailbox um, this the same day. So. Uh, really, really cool functionality there that uh, speeds up that cycle process. Um, the other thing that, that I'd like to show you guys today, I, and we'll look at our, our batch billing, which um, is, is a really robust and powerful way to generate a, a you know, high volume of invoices. We talked about sometimes these cycles taking one to two days where you can generate you know, thousands of invoices in a few minutes. Uh, we'll take a look at that, but we also have a pretty sophisticated pre-bill feature as well. So um, I'm going to come in here to our pre-bill section and I've generated some pre-bills. So what that's going to do is any pending activity that, uh, was, was on the matters that I generated the pre-bills for, it's going to pull it here into our pre-bill section. And we'll be able to take a look at this, uh, take a look at the, the, uh, the activities that are on the invoice 
and do our auditing. So typically this pre-bill process, what we've heard from a lot of our law firms is, you know, you print out a, a preview of the invoice, you pass it around the office, uh, the different billing, uh, the billing um, users within the firm, you know, they get a red pen, they mark it up, they give it back to the billing administrator, whoever's handling the invoicing, and then they go back into the system, they make any adjustments or, or corrections or edits that are, that are needed. And unfortunately, that's kind of a, an error prone process. And also, you know, just the way people are working today um, in, a, in a very remote environment, uh, it, it's very difficult to um, to execute on that sort of process. So what we have here is an electronic pre-bill. So this is gonna allow you to come in, look at the activity. You can edit these activities right here on the fly. You can also lock this activity down if you want to. So any activity that's coming to pre-bill, only specific users have access to edit it. So those attorneys, you can say, hey, get all your activity in by the end of the month. From there, once it's submitted, the billing administrators will handle it. They'll look at it, they'll audit it. If they have questions, you can actually open a commenting thread on the activity and, uh, and, and ping that user and ask any questions that you need to. Um, so again, I'm moving very quick here because there's a lot of functionality here to, to go over, but um, you can imagine how that process can change pretty dramatically from a very you know, paper-driven inefficient process to a completely electronic cloud-based process that no matter where you are, in, uh, you know, physically, you can still uh, complete your pre-bill process and your invoicing process. And then I'll go ahead and just go to our batch billing engine. Um, so this is where, so now you can always go to a matter in Rocket Matter and generate an invoice, you know, just a one-off invoice, no problem. Or you can also come in and generate thousands of invoices uh, with just a few clicks. So this is our batch billing screen. And we have a very sophisticated and robust set of filters here that allows the uh, whoever's coming in to generate invoices to really dissect and pull out exactly what they want to go ahead and invoice for. So you can you can just uh, invoice for outstanding invoices or unpaid invoices. Um, you can filter by case type. You can even just pull in certain types of activities. So say you don't want to invoice for your fees yet, but you do want to collect on any hard expenses or hard costs that you've incurred on behalf of the client. You can do that very, very easily. You can filter by client, you can filter by matter, you can even filter by custom field. So if you go into your matter and add a custom field called like billing frequency, and that value happens to be yearly, um, you can grab all those matters that have those values and pull them in an invoice form. And once you fill out these, this filter criteria, you click get answer, and you're gonna get a result list of everything that fit that filter criteria. So here's all the matters within the system um, that fit that filter criteria. And I can go ahead and invoice for these right now, or I can generate pre-bills, which is what we saw in the previous step and go through our pre-bill process. Just depends on the workflow of your firm and what you're comfortable with. Um, but generating those invoices uh, you know, in volume is really, really easy within Rocket Matter. And as we looked at some of those examples and, and some of the feedback that we got in the poll, you can see where this can really help close that cycle uh, pretty significantly. Hey, Ed, real quick, um, one thing I want to uh, point out to the uh, audience is that, first of all, pre-bills is like uh, a really can be a painful process in a law firm because, you know, they're, they're, they have to print out a copy of the invoices for each attorney to review, then the attorneys go through and they review them. And then, um, and then somebody in the midst of all this goes and adds more billable time to a matter. So with our paperless pre-bill, what we tried to do was we tried to like, okay, let's lock that down um, so that when, and, and by the way, this is, some of this is newer functionality that not everybody has. Um, let's see. Um, and I and guess- the other thing to add there, Larry, is like, even when you lock down that activity, if somebody does come in after the fact and add some activity and they want it to be pulled into the invoice, we do have that option as well, where you can go in and grab some pending activity and pull it right into that pre-bill without having to delete and reject. Right. Yeah, so you can review that. And, and the other thing is that when we were talking about like the invoice generation time, I mean, you can see like it um, with this kind of a tool where you have all the invoices in a grid and then you can click a button and it pre-bills them all or it sends them all out. Like, I mean, imagine the difference between, like that's why it's taken some people like two days or more because they have to generate all this stuff by hand or, or from, um, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, and we've, and we've had law firms that are generating, you know, like literally thousands, you know, between two and 3,000 invoices um, within, you know, minutes. So 
um, that's pretty that's pretty powerful functionality for sure. Okay, gotcha. All right, um, all right, Ed. All right. So, so what I would like to do now is actually generate an invoice and show um, the the invoice generation side, and then also the collection side as well. So I'm going to go into a matter that I have set up here. And I have some activity that's uh, that's pending right now within this matter, and I'm going to go ahead and invoice it. So one of the things I did on this matter is I set up invoice sharing. So what invoice sharing does is you can put in uh, anybody who you want to receive these invoices when they're generated electronically. So it's not something where you have to print it out and mail it. It's going to automatically email uh, whoever you have set up and configured here and include a copy of that invoice and not only a copy of the invoice, but if you're set up with credit card processing, a link to pay the invoice. So, you know, imagine the difference between receiving something in the mail and the time that takes opposed to, you know, generating an invoice, the, the customer has the email in their inbox within a few minutes, they click the link, they pay, you know, you, you your collection cycle could be same day in some situations. So, I'm going to go ahead and generate this invoice. Let's go into our matter billing. And I'm going to invoice. And the magic is happening on the back end. Oh boy. Complete. So I set up just a temporary email account here. Um, and here it is right here. So we have the invoice that came in. I can go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, here's the messaging that you can set up and customize. It just says, you know, here's your most recent invoice. The invoice is attached. And then also we have a link right here that says, please click here to pay. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And here's all the details of the invoice. You know, your client is, is able to see everything that they're being charged, any past due balance, uh, what the current charges are. And uh, they're able to put in a credit card or an e-check. I'm going to go ahead and enter this. And by the way, Ed, the one thing that you um, that you can actually do is you can on the Rocket Matter side of things, you can kind of see if your client has seen the invoice. Like they're on the ledger where you send out, uh, uh, where, where you see that the invoice has been generated. Um, you see that there's this little envelope, and that's opened right now. But yep. before the client like sees the email, it will be closed. So if you have kind of an issue with the client paying the bill, like, oh, I never saw anything, you'll be able to tell exactly when they saw the invoice. So that's pretty powerful. Yep, exactly. So, and, and by the way, again, you know, I, I, this is a Florida bar CLE and what we have is, you know, powerful stuff here. But also I just want to point out is that um, there are other products on the market that do similar things. And I just need to uh, let you guys all know this so that if, when you do shop for a good solution, um, uh, you know, that there are other choices available. Just just so I'm not accused of showing from the podium because I like to be very sensitive about it. Just This just happens to be what we know. Yep, yep, exactly. So as you can see, I made that payment. Uh, I come into my matter ledger. I can see right here, we have an online payment in the full amount. So now this is all zeroed out. Our payment came in. Uh, we can view details on it. But as you can see uh, how streamlined of a process you could have set up and running when it comes to capturing your time, invoicing for that time, sending those invoices out electronically, collecting that payment with a few clicks on behalf of your, you know, on your client side. And that comes right back into your ledger here and your reporting and you're good to go and keep working. So um, pretty, pretty cool stuff and, and, and you know, when firms get dialed, get this dialed in, it's pretty amazing to see. Yeah, well, they get paid sometimes the same day, which is kind of crazy. And yeah. so, and and that's like, um, that kind of goes back to some of the other ideas that we talk about in Lean Law Firm, where with cycle time, because cycle time really refers to the length of the duration of a matter. So from the time you start it to the time you get paid is your cycle time. And the shorter that is, the more uh, money you'll make in a year. It's just how the math works. Yep. Yep, exactly. So, um, so one other thing I'd like to show as well, because Larry touched on this uh, during the slide presentation, is just recurring billing and payment plans. Because this is another way that you can increase collections. And the nice thing about this is, is kind of set it and forget it. So once you set it up and you're and you're off and running, uh, the money's just going to come in, and you don't have to necessarily, you know, generate invoices and and follow up on it. So here I'm in a matter that actually has an outstanding balance. So I'm going to go to matter payments. And for matter payments, I'm going to select 
payment plan. So the, so this client, they can't pay this full balance. So they've come to us and said, hey, can we break this up into you know 10 payments? So I can come in here, I can go to payment plan. Here's my balance that's being put in. I can choose you know when I want that first payment to occur. I'm gonna put in, um, if anything happens with the payment, the, the you know when we do automatic billing, you can choose who gets notified to see what that is. So right. I'm going to choose a monthly frequency and I'm going to try. By the way, that's that to me, that is the most curious feature in all of Rocket Matter is that we got a request to change the payment frequency because people want daily charges. So, and I guess that happens in sometimes in criminal defense cases where they just want to ding people like a couple bucks a day. Yep, exactly. So here we have uh, equal, equal monthly payments, 10 payments. I'm going to choose automatic billing. So that's going to automatically as soon as this payment comes due on the 14th of each month it's automatically going to charge them that money is going to come into rocket matter and we're going to reduce that balance so i'm just going to go to next step uh, we can choose where we'd like to post the funds if we want to post it to operating or trust or automatic i'm going to post these to operating i can choose to share uh, the invoices so i'll just add a contact here oh this thing's in the way Here we go. And then you can review the plan. So this is gonna give you a breakdown of all the charges, when they're gonna happen and what the amount's gonna be. You can come in and manually override any of these dates that you need to override. If uh, maybe the, the client requests, hey, you know, uh, in September, can you please push that back a couple of days? You can very easily do that. And then you can start this plan. And like I said, you kind of set it and forget it. And the other really nice thing is you can also set a similar structure up for uh, recurring payments. So if you wanted to set up a recurring retainer or subscription type of type billing, you can set that up in the, in the, in the exact same way where it's automatically going to charge a checking account or a credit card, um, you know, whatever frequency that you've determined when configuring the plan. So that's our um, recurring billing and payment plans, which uh, has been a, a great feature for us. Um, so what's, what's, what's really interesting about this is that if you're looking at the screen, and um, and you're thinking, okay, well, I don't have anything that could be recurring payment. I, I challenge yourself on that one because if you can figure out ways to structure recurring payments or recur some sort of recurring billing, it is going to really transform your life. The, the idea of setting and forgetting, not having to generate invoices, not having to do payments, and having a kind of a, a revenue stream that you can count on is pretty incredible. Uh, so, sure. you know, um, it, 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 it's really, really good if you can figure out a way to do it. And in the slide deck, I kind of discussed some ideas, but maybe you can talk about it with uh, some of your like other lawyer friends that are in your like uh, that you collaborate with, uh, because it, it, it's definitely worth doing. For sure. Yep. And you see more and more firms going in that direction as well. That, that's absolutely true. It is a big trend. So uh, one other thing I'd like to show is just, um, you know, payment collection and how this can also be a more efficient sort of process. A lot of times um, firms will have a client, they're working multiple matters, they'll send invoices out and they'll receive one check to pay across uh, multiple matters um, for that client. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to filter down to this State Farm client. I'm going to apply that. You can see we have three outstanding invoices for this client and say they wrote us a check for whatever this balance is. So I can come in here and pay and I can enter that payment amount in here. Let's say they paid us 5,000 bucks and it's gonna automatically distribute that among the invoices. It's gonna pay the oldest one first. If it's not a full payment, if it is partial, uh, it'll distribute that automatically for you. And this is a basic view. You can also go into a detailed view. And what's nice about this is it's going to show you a little bit more details and granularity, and you can even drill down further. So if you wanted to look at what was billed on the invoice and you wanted to distribute or allocate that payment, if it is a partial payment, um, very specifically based on uh, you know how it was paid, you can come in here and enter that payment on an activity level. And if it wasn't paid in full, a lot of times, like we talked about with, with the e-billing platforms and submitting lead, leads invoices, they're not paid in full. So there might be an activity or two that you got pushback on, uh, like say on this 450, we weren't paid the full amount. We can adjust this amount and then easily write off the balance because we know we're not gonna get um, paid in full on that particular activity. 
So you can see the level of granularity that you can have. It can be very simple. Um, you can just enter the payment, have it distribute, or you can come down and actually drill down on an activity or on a billing user basis, depending on what that payment amount was and, and if it was a partial payment. So that's just part of the way on the collection side. Um, did, you, did you have something to add, Larry? No, I just, um, this is actually uh, one of my favorite, uh, I mean, I, not that like recording payments can be like sexy, but I actually kind of do like the screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. So another thing we'd like to show uh, while we have you guys is our business intelligence, because we talked about just the ability to report on certain financial aspects of your firm, whether it's collection percentage, whether it's um, cycle time and all these sorts of things. We do have reports out of the box that report on those, uh, you know, all those different areas, but we also have what's called our business intelligence platform, which allows you to piece together and, and bring data points together to create your own reports and to see and consume the data within your system, uh, you know, how you want to. So I'll come in here and just look at this billable activity by user report. You'll see that uh, we've pulled in some data points here. Um, I can go ahead and run this report, I'm gonna get information. I do have some groupings here. I'm grouping by billing user and I'm grouping by billing week. So I can drill down if I wanna take a look at what Craig has done. Here's this billing week and I can go in and see these activities. This is completely dynamic. If I wanted to add columns from here, if I wanted to move these around, if I wanted to add filtering criteria or grouping, uh, pretty much the possibilities are endless. And it really empowers the firm to be able to get in. The data is there in the system, but sometimes consuming it or extracting it the way you need to can be challenging. And, and if there's an out of, out of the box report that's missing a, a column or two, or there just isn't something there out of the box that's, that's giving you the data exactly how you want to see it, you can come into our business intelligence platform and, and piece together your own reports and uh, extract the data that way. And it's not just our standard fields. If you have custom fields uh, that you've set up, uh, the custom fields are pulled in dynamically as well, as well as tags. So if there's a specific custom field that you can leverage to filter out what you're viewing, or there's a certain data point in those custom fields, those get pulled into business intelligence as well, which is really awesome. Um, the one other thing I'd like to show is, is our cycle time. You know, that's another data point that we do have available. Uh, here within business intelligence, and that's going to tell you how long it took from when you opened the matter to when you completed the matter. And, and that's a really important metric, as Larry mentioned, when you're looking at things from a lean perspective, because, uh, you know, the more you can reduce that cycle time, the more money you're going to make uh, on any given year. So I can come in here and take a look at this and see all my completed matters that I have that, that fit this filtering criteria. Here's my cycle time right here for each of these matters. So uh, all this data can be exported to Excel, um, but you can imagine when it comes to being able to report on what you're doing and have real intelligence into the financial workings of your firm, this BI platform really, uh, really shines. Yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful thing. And um, what's interesting is that um, that you can actually like, so if you set up custom fields inside of the product, you can report on the custom fields as well. Yeah. So whatever you want to track, you can report on basically. Uh, is really good. Um, now, some of this is a um, some of this functionality is going to be released. Is uh, so there's rocket matter people saying like, well, wait a second, this doesn't look exactly like my rocket matter. That's because some of the stuff is new and it's going to be rolled out in a month or two. Some of this is going to be um, available on the standard tier that we have. Some of it will be uh, available through like kind of an upgraded premier tier that we're going to be introducing because it's. Uh, so powerful. So um, if you have any questions about that, and I, I see the questions coming in as we're wrapping up, um, just email me and I can put you in touch with the right people. Um, so Ed, let me just wrap up with a, a couple of remaining slides as we finish up. And thank you for your whirlwind tour that that was pretty awesome that you were able to cover all that stuff quickly. And don't worry if you didn't catch all that, because I mean, you're going to be able to get a recording. Uh, we'll be following up with you. So um <clears throat> how do i do this again i'm like after an hour of doing a webinar your brain turns to mush everyone so like i don't even know what i'm doing anymore all right but I, i'm assuming you can see my screen right yep okay good i did that right at least okay so we did our demo um 
you know, there's a lot, of, it's great seeing the Rocket Matter family on the webinar. If you are uh, not a Rocket Matter subscriber, so unfortunately for Rocket Matter people, this is not available to you guys. Um, um, unless you're not using Lex Charges, and we can probably hook you up with a discount there. Um, so if you are um, new to Rocket Matter, uh, we're doing a promotion this month, three free months in your first year. Uh, and then also we have uh, reduced rates for the credit card processing for the first six months. So that's, uh, that's a good deal. So if you're interested, that's out there. So again, just email me or uh, Larry at rocketmatter.com and I can get you in touch with the right people. And then uh, uh, this is for the Florida bar. This is, uh, and we have a certificate of attendance if you need. So our people will be following up with you to see if you need one. Um, the CLE course is 4956. Again, that's 4956 for Florida and it's one hour of general CLE and one hour of tech. So good for everybody earning an hour of CLE and tech just by sitting there listening to me and Ed on the phone, rock and roll. Um, I think that's all we got. This was a great session. It was, uh, love to hear what you have to say. Uh, let me put those uh, email addresses back up there, but it's, um, you know, Ed, it's, if you don't mind, I put it on the screen. It's ed.case at rockamender.com and it's larry.port at rockamender.com. So you know, if you're a Rocket Matter customer, say hi. We'd love to hear feedback and so on and so forth. For the Rocket Matter customers, by the way, we are looking for new people that want to be involved with future product direction because we have a um, product advisory committee that Ed runs and we're recruiting new members for it. So we're actively looking for people to um, help us out, review the new features that are coming out, give us input on what you think, and, and work with other kind of cool people in legal technology, other attorneys and so on and so forth, and consultants on, on this panel. Yeah, and it's really, uh, it's not a huge, um, you know, time commitment. Uh, it's only one hour. 30 hours a week, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's only, you know, each session is only one hour and we'll probably have, I think we have three more this year. So um, we'd love to get, it's a really cool opportunity to see what we're doing, where we're going and an opportunity to give us your feedback on where you think we should go. So please reach out to me if you're interested in that. We'd love to, uh, to get some, some new members on board. Yeah, and I'm Larry.port at rockamender.com. And you know, any any thoughts, concerns, anything you have, send my way. Um, and um, if I can't address it, I'll get it to somebody who knows what they're doing. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, it was a pleasure, and uh, thank you for your valuable time. Thank you so much.